Well, good evening and welcome to Frederica Baptist Church's Wednesday night Bible study this October the 7th. And I'm so glad that you are joining me tonight. I'm coming to you from Mallory Park here on St. Simons Island. Thought I'd come outside again. Enjoyed last week. Hope y'all did. And uh, for our Bible study tonight, and uh, hopefully this will work out well. And uh, for our study this evening, I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard and uh, as far as the translation and all of the uh, uh, references I'll be reading will also be from that uh, version. But if you have another one, that's fine. You'll be able to follow along uh, with no difficulties whatsoever. But let's go ahead and start tonight with a word of prayer and then we'll get right into our study. Father, thank you so much for our time together to be able to study your word together. We thank you for your word, for giving it to us to reveal yourself and your ways and and reveal salvation to us so that we can know you personally. I pray tonight as we study your word together that you'll give us understanding that your Holy Spirit will illumine your word and just uh, teach us uh, as we look at it together. And uh, pray that you'll help me to die to myself, that you'll simply speak through me, use me as your instrument. And Father, may all of our hearts be listening, ready to hear your word and to receive your word uh, so that we can live our lives in a better way, more, uh, more like you, uh, closer to like Jesus. Uh, that's our prayer. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, so glad that you joined me. And uh, tonight we're going to be in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And if you know anything about Exodus 20, you know that we're going to be looking at one of the Ten Commandments. And uh, so tonight's message is just going to be one passage of Scripture, just verse 12. And... Um, we're going to be looking at honor your parents. Now, some of you may already be saying, well, I'm too old for this. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. But don't do that because none of us are too old uh, to honor our parents. And we'll, you'll see that as we go through. And so I hope that you will uh, stay with me here and uh, follow along. So we're going to read Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. If you want to follow along with me, it says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And this is, of course, a very familiar passage, one that I'm sure many of you have looked at and studied. And those of you who have children, you may have quoted it very uh, many times to them. Uh, but this is the fifth commandment out of the ten, and, and it is the first commandment that has a promise uh, attached to it. Now, the one thing I really want to look at tonight is the verb that is used, the very first word, honor. This is a verb, and the definition is to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect, or to give special recognition to, or to live up to, or fulfill the terms of. So what does it mean then to honor your parents? In Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul speaks on this in his teachings on family relationships. And he says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Now he begins with obey, okay, which is par part of honoring, but then he simply quotes Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Now, many pe people believe that obeying is all that is necessary for this commandment and may even quote it with obey in there but it goes much further than that and that's what I'm wanting to look at tonight the word used in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 and that is repeated then again in Ephesians 6 2 is not obey it's honor so what does it mean to honor your parents now here's a few ways this is some things that, that have come to me. The first thing is we are to obey them, okay? Obedience is what comes to mind quickly uh, when you hear this commandment, and especially for children. And when a child obeys their parents, that is showing honor. It is showing admiration and respect. It is living up to or fulfilling their terms, which is the def definition of honor. And it is a big uh, part of honoring parents especially uh, when a child, uh, when, when you're a child, when you're that age, when you're younger and growing up in your parents' home, 
obedience is a, a big part of that. Now, Paul's sister passage uh, to the to the Colos is uh, to the Colossians is almost identical to Ephesians six. In Colossians three twenty, he again is saying, "Children, obey your parents." So when a parent says to do something or not to do something, the child should obey. So obeying them. Uh, clean your room. All of us has probably heard that. Make up your bed or go to bed. It's time to go to bed. Uh, don't go out of our yard when you're playing outside. That's uh, a, a, a command or a request from, from a parent that actually is for the child's safety so they don't get all. Uh, one I heard uh, many times was don't hit your brother. <laughs> so you may have heard some things. Those are uh, commands from the parent or, or, or requests from the parent that requires obedience. The next thing though is following their teaching is another way to show honor to your parents. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 it says, Hear my son your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Here Solomon is writing uh, to his son in saying, don't forget the instruction or forsake the teaching uh, from your parents, from your father and your mother. Of course, we understand that as well as God speaking to us, but in this context, we can leave it into that. In Proverbs chapter 13, verses one through two, he says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. So in that proverb, he is loosely uh, translating uh, Exodus 20 verse 12. He is saying the same thing, that we are to obey or honor our parents, and then we will have a length of days. So it's much like obeying this following their teaching but it goes beyond simply accomplishing a task. Following their teaching requires remembering uh, what has been taught and then applying it to one's own life and situations. As we encounter different situations or even problems in our lives, we very often will respond in ways that reveal what our parents taught us or things we have learned from them. So our parents' teachings also help guide us in decisions that we make in our lives and how to live our lives. Maybe in our career choices, uh, who we date or who we marry, uh, what we believe about God and his church and how we treat others. These are all things that a parent teaches to their children or to their child and instructs them so that they know how they are to live. Another thing, another way that we honor our parents is following their example of putting God first. Now, some of you did not have godly parents, and so you learned the love of God from someone else, maybe at a church or, or a neighbor or a grandparent. Uh, yet you were then able to be an example to your parents. But some of us are able to say that we had godly parents and they, that taught us to love God and gave us good examples uh, in how they lived their lives in a godly way. And some of us are still seeing those living examples. We still have those living examples in our parents. No matter how old we are, our parents will maybe still be living and showing us uh, the examples of how to live a godly way and putting God first in our lives. As we learn from their teachings, we see those teachings in action through their lives and how they live them. We see their actions and their reactions and then can better understand how their teachings are lived out. In James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. So we understand that as also in our Christian lives that we are to live what the Word says. What the Bible tells us is to live our lives in a godly way. And so we do that uh, because we are wanting to be faithful to the Lord. 
when we do the things that our parents have taught us and the examples they have given us, then we are showing honor to them as we follow their teaching. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So we are to be living our lives in a way that is pleasing to Him, but also in honoring our parents, we live godly lives to show honor and respect to them as well. Now, a fourth way we can show honor to our parents is speaking well of them. No matter how old we are, we should always speak well of our parents. This shows respect and thus honors them. Jesus says in Matthew 15 verse 4, For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. Now that's very strong language. He's quoting Exodus 20 verse 12 in the first part of that verse, but then he also quotes Exodus 21, verse 17 in the latter part. See, God takes respecting one's parents very seriously, and especially with our speech. We are not to be tearing down others, and we definitely don't need to be tearing down our parents and speaking evil of them or disrespecting them uh, through how we are talking about them. Another way that we show honor to our parents is speaking politely to them. Again, our speech uh, should show honor, not only as we speak about them, but as we speak to them. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Let your speech always be with grace. Now, we need to be doing that with whomever we are speaking with, and uh, especially, though, our parents. Anytime we speak should be nice, but especially to our parents. These are the people who have taken care of us, provided for us, loved us, and with God's help, gave us life, okay? They birthed us. So there's no room for disrespecting your parents by speaking rudely or impolitely to them. There are few things that hurt me more than to hear someone speak rudely uh, or being mean to their parent with their words. That's something that really cuts to the quick on me, and I hate to hear that. I'm sure several of you feel the same way. Another way that we show honor to our parents is acting in ways that show them courtesy and respect. What are we doing for them? Our actions can show honor to our parents, such as opening a, a door for them either a vehicle or, a, or to the house or things, waiting for them to sit before we sit down at, at the dinner table, okay? Using sir and ma'am, uh, good proper manners that are shown to them, just like what we want to do with others, we especially want to do that with our parents. And then as they get older, parents may need extra help with things around the house or simply themselves getting around physically. They may be getting weaker, not able to walk too well, and they need some extra attention. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22 says, listen to your father who begot you or gave you birth, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Here the Proverbs are saying, uh, he's writing there, Solomon saying, you've got to respect your parents even when they get older. 1 Timothy 5.8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those in his, of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. What's in store for an unbeliever? Hell and damnation because they have rejected Jesus. That's pretty bad. So they are worse if you're not taking care of your family, not taking care of your parents, when you are able to do so and they need that help. If you don't do that, this verse is saying you're worse than an unbeliever. God takes family very seriously and respecting and honoring our parents very seriously. We need to take care of our parents as they age. Even when it's beyond our ability, we have to make sure 
that they are cared for, cared for by the best professionals that we can in any uh, assisted living facilities or nursing homes and things such as that. And we have to show them that honor and respect by making sure they're taken care of. And the last thing is, is one that of course could be first and the only thing because it should cover everything. And that is showing honor to our parents. We simply need to love them. And this is that love that is that agape love. Uh, not, uh, it's the self-sacrificing love. It's not, not what can I get out of it love, it's what I want to give. Not expecting anything in return. And that's how we are to love our parents. If we love, we will be able to do everything else that I've talked about and more. Because, of course, this is not an exhaustive list of how uh, or ways how we can honor our parents. But for some now, it may be difficult to love your parents, okay? I understand that because of that they did not show you the love of God when you were growing up. They may have mistreated you, even abused you, and caused great harm. But only through God can you reach the ability to forgive. But that's what we all have to do. We have to get to that point to be willing to forgive them. If we take into account what we've done against God and how he has forgiven us, we take his example and then through his power, through his strength, we are able then to forgive others. And that includes our parents, even those who may have mistreated us. God loves everyone and so are we. We are to love everyone just as he does. Jesus says in John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So for some of us, it is easy to love our parents because we are simply giving back to them what they have given to us. Love is a verb, remember, so make sure that we show our love through actions. And when we love God, uh, love our parents, love others, we are being like God because God loves us. And when we honor our father and our mother, we are honoring God because he is the one who commanded it. Now, before we close, I wanna ask this one question. How long do you honor your parents? Now, I enjoy asking this to children, okay, uh, children and to uh, the teenagers and stuff as I talk to them about honoring parents at times. But I want to ask you as well, how long do you honor your parents? Till you're 18? Till you're out of their house? Till they die? The answer is actually for the rest of your life. See, as long as we live, we are to be honoring our parents, whatever we do. Now, some of us parents may have passed on and there's not a way to obey them right now or to show that love to them directly. But as we live our lives, as we speak about them, as we remember them, as we talk about them, to others and share what they did and how they raised us. That is how we continue to show honor and respect and love to our parents. And we are to honor them until we die, until we pass from this earth into glory. So tonight, I'm not sure exactly uh, why God led me to this passage, but, uh, but he did and I felt that I needed to share this about honoring our parents. And a lot of times we, like I said, we get thinking that just obeying our parents is that, but that's not the fullness of God's word and what he is saying. We don't simply obey, we need to show honor to them. So we show that respect to them and how we live our lives, how we treat them, and how we treat others. And of course, as we're doing that, as we're showing honor to our parents, 
we are showing honor to God because it's his commandment and he's the one that has given us our parents and blessed us with them to give us life and to raise us here on this earth and so we need to be showing that honor and respect to them thus showing honor and respect to God let us pray father thank you again for our time together I pray that you've been able to accomplish in and through this time in and through this study in and through me what you desired and may we take this now and apply it to our lives so that we can better serve you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining me, me this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the study. And I hope to see you on Sunday as we come back together to worship the Lord, either in person there at the church or online. I uh, hope to see you there. God bless you.